Today we're going to be doing the Shadow Temple in its entirety from start to finish. First thing that we need to do here to open the door is pull out Din's Fire. Make sure you have enough magic for this and cast it within the square here. And that will fill the room with fire, lighting all the torches at once and opening the door. It is possible to do that as a child, but you will find you cannot really get much further within the Shadow Temple without the long shot at the very least. So we're going to turn in and turn right. I'm going to equip the long shot and we're going to head straight across into the next room. Just through here and you'll get a warning saying without the lens of truth as handed down from Kakariko. Well, we have the lens of truth. We got that um, in the video before last and this is the main tool we're going to be using within the Shadow Temple. So now that we're in here, the first thing that we are going to get is the dungeon map. So where do we get that? Well, we must head first through here. Uh, no, that's the way we came in, sorry. Um, first place that we need to head is through one of these invisible doors, which is this one here. And we're going to go through here. Okay, and you can see that that bit is hollow as well. And they basically just tell you that you need the lens of truth. Take a right, head along here. And we're going to head through this door where we will fight a redead. So we're just going to kill him quickly. And apparently I still have the um, Bigoran Sword equipped. I did not actually realise that. So there are some bats in this room. I believe they actually might be invisible as well. So, you know, that's something to think about. Just going to kill them real quick. If I can find them. There we are. Cool. And this will spawn the dungeon map. Which we will just get right now. Obviously, quite a difficult temple to find your way around. So the map is going to be extremely useful. And there we have it, the dungeon map. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the hover boot. Probably the most useful. Uh, we're going to head through here. And we're going to, again, take another right. And we're going to head through this room here with the two pots on either side. And just keep your lens of truth out as you will want to make sure that you don't run into anything that you don't want to. And yeah, you just keep getting these messages, but don't worry about that. Just follow the route I'm taking. And we're going to fight another dead hand here. So this will be easier than uh, when we did it as Child Link because the, our weaponry is better basically. So. Oh, and he's caught me again. Okay, so we just can let him catch me and that will bring him back up again. I basically just button mash until he releases me. And again, I'm using the big Goron sword here. Just try and do that as much as I can. And let him catch you once again. And I just button mash. There we are. Nice, and that is him dead, and he drops magic as well, which is really cool. So, that is going to spawn a chest, which is going to be the hover boots. And the hover boots are so awesome. They let you, like, basically walk on thin air for a short period of time. Really cool stuff, and it's really good that you get them so early in the game as well. Uh, the downside is you have no traction, so you will slip around, so just be careful with that. So because there's nothing left to get in this room for the moment, or this area, we're going to head back to the main room that we started in with the little circle area. Just follow the route I'm taking, feel free to use the lens of truth, and sorry I'm going the wrong way here. We're going to head back through here. The next item that we are going to get is the compass, but we can't get it quite just yet. Uh, we are going to get it in a moment. We're just going to head back through this door first of all. To this room here. So, how to complete this puzzle? Well, you will notice that some of the skulls are invisible. 
that means that they're not real and we have to push this block it's a block puzzle we have to push it to the one that is real so it's not going to be that one it's actually going to be this one here and that will complete the puzzle opening the door next what we need to do is we need to equip our hover boots I'm going to roll for a bit of extra speed and I actually messed that up there. So yeah, you have to be quite precise with that. And we're going to head through here again. And it's already activated. So again, I'm just going to... There we are. And we had just enough to be able to get that. I'm going to take the hover boots off now. It's something you're going to have to do quite a bit on and off. It can get quite... Annoying, just like the iron boots in the water temple. And we are going to head down here. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this bee moss so it doesn't get in my way. So we're just going to get rid of that bee moss real quick. Okay, that didn't work, so we're going to try again. There we are. Great stuff. Okay, so equip your lens of truth and bombs. What you'll notice about this next room uh, is a few of the doors are, um, there are invisible walls and one of them is not. So we're going to plant a bomb here and we're going to get rid of that and it opens a door with a key. So where to start? Well, first of all, we're going to go through the left room. And it will take you to this room with lots of spinning scythes. Now, the puzzle here is simple. Basically, all you have to do is get all of the silver rupees. So, we're going to do that. That's three so far. Um, the best way to dodge these things is to shield. That will cause Link to basically uh, duck a little bit. And you will be able to uh, avoid the scythes. So, there is another one here. What you want to do as well, sorry, is equip your long shot. And we're going to long shot up there. And then I'm just going to jump off the edge here. If I can. Nice. And that opened that door there. So, I'm just going to duck. And we are going to... Let's see if I can remember. Is it this door here we go through? And we're going to open this door, this chest, and it gives us a small key. Excellent. So, I'm just going to have another quick look around here, make sure there's nothing else I've missed. Um, oh, a trap. Okay, so I'm glad that we stumbled across that. You don't want to... You do not want to fall down there. So we are actually going to leave this room now altogether. Make our way back to the room with the bee moss. And this time we're going to go through the other door. On the other side of the bee moss. Because we are going to be getting the compass. So it's just through here. And this room has a gibdo. So you can play Sun Song if you want to kill these guys. Probably the best way to do it. Uh, he just got me there, but that's okay. So it takes two hits, so I'm not really, really that worried. Let's see if I can get him. There we are, two hits, and he's dead. And this will reveal a chest with the compass inside. So we're making it through this temple quite quickly. The temple itself is really very linear, especially compared to the water temple. And to be honest, it's actually not that long either. So yeah, it's probably one of the shortest temples. It's arguably the hardest because of what you have to do and who you have to face. But apart from that, yeah, it's not really that bad. Next, we're going to head through this door with the locked um, door here. And that will take us here. So this room... Well, there are skull... I was about to say there are skull tullers from the roof, so just be careful of that. I'm going to use the long shot there to kill them quickly. I believe there are floor masters or wall masters uh, in this area as well. So just be careful about that. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay, good stuff, good stuff. So we're going to head down here. So the guillotines, you need to be careful about the guillotines. Uh, just time it right, try and get across, and we're going to get hit by every skull taller going, apparently. I totally forgot how many there actually was. We'll kill all these guys. I'm just going to make it through there. The guillotines will hurt you, but they will not fade you out. So here it is, the shadows, monsters that hang from the ceiling. Cool. It's only in this area here, so don't worry about that. Uh, right, we are going to jump across there. You will no longer have to worry about the floor masters, so don't worry. Uh, this part, you will need the hover boots nearly most definitely. So we're going to attempt to try and get across here. So let's see if we can time this right. And we did it, good, okay. This next area, again, just about timing. Make your way down. And you want to time this just right. And you can make it across. Okay, so there is a Stalpos here. You don't actually need to kill him. Uh, but I'm going to kill him. Just so I can show you guys a little bit about what's going on around this area. So, if you put the Lens of Truth on, you can see a path leading over to the right there. And there's one that way as well. We're first going to take this path here. And we are going to make our way across here. And across here. Then we'll go through this door. Great stuff. So, let's head through here now. And I'm actually going to take off the uh, iron boots. Because we don't actually need them at the minute. Uh, sorry, I did not mean to equip the iron boots as well. So this room looks empty. It looks relatively harmless, yeah? Well, watch this. Oh, yeah, you don't want to get caught with that. As long as you stay out of the circle area, you'll actually be okay anyway. But, yeah, so there's bats in this room and there's like likes. I'm going to try and deal with the like like first. Um, if I can. There we are. Great stuff. Now, I have a lot of health here, so I'm not really too concerned about taking a little bit of damage here and if i remember correctly you have to play song of time here if you want them hearts uh, there's more bats so yeah we're gonna try and take care of these bats because uh, that's the first thing that we need to do so while you're trying to take care of the bats so you must remember uh, obviously that there is the scythes in the room so just be careful of that and try and take out the bats before they start flying it'll just make them easier to kill overall and there's another one somewhere but I'm not really sure where he is I'm gonna pick up the heart though oh there's one over there so we're gonna try and kill him before he starts flying Great stuff, and that has opened the door for us. So we're going to head through here. And we can see a Skulltuller. I'm going to nab that Skulltuller. Great stuff, great stuff. And I'm just going to open this chest as well real quick. And five rupees. So you'll also notice if you use the Lens of Truth that there is another chest here. Pick that up if you wish, and you get some arrows, which is always pretty sweet. So we're going to follow our way back through to the um, entrance now, which is just through here. And back through this main door. So again, we're going to use the Lens of Truth, although you don't really need to. And worth mentioning, you don't even need the hover boots either. Uh, for this part, I would advise you do use the hover boots. I would also advise you only uh, go for this next drop when the platform is at its lowest. And for that reason, you, you know, your, your best bet is probably just to kill the Skulltuller and um, the Stalfos. Okay, now is the time to go. And we missed. Okay, you really have to do that when it's at its very bottom point. Uh, for... The greatest chance to get across 
So we should be able to do it around now. Nice. Okay, we made it on. And yeah, you don't want to fall off. So what you want to do next, again, hover boots. Cool, great stuff. So we made it across. Now, you will notice that there are two ways you can go here. I'm going to equip the Kikiri boots. So you'll notice that one way has a key. So there's no point going that way yet. Uh, we're going to head this way first of all. <clears throat> and there are some silver rupees around the BMOS. Not really concerned about the BMOS. Feel free to kill it if you wish. But I'm not really worried about it. So, um, Okay, so you got them. Actually, the last one might be inside the BMOS. Oh, it is actually. Sorry, yeah, the last one's inside the BMOS. So, yeah, definitely kill the BMOS. Pick up the bombs, head through the door. Take a left. And I'm sorry that I keep accidentally unequipping the Lens of Truth. You want to keep the Lens of Truth equipped at all times. Um, so, this room. Well... What you have to do is there is a block to the right here. We're going to grab this block and pull it out. Now you probably hear another skull toilet in this room. So yeah, now that we've pulled the block out, what we're going to do is we're going to use this block as an umbrella of sorts. Um, well, really, it's just to protect us from the spiky things. So we're just going to push it along here. All the way along great stuff so I believe it's at this point yeah we should be protected on both sides which is super cool and there is a skull tuller in this room here if I can okay so I just struggling to see so we're gonna go through here get the skull tuller I'm gonna unequip the lens of truth quickly and get the next skull tuller token so this next part quite important Basically, uh, instead of pushing the block this time, we are now going to pull it. Just going to get that chest real quick. Uh, I think it's probably rupees, but I genuinely don't remember. Deku nuts? Arrows? Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, this time what you want to do is pull the block instead of pushing it. Just means that the umbrella uh, will not come down and kill you. The spike umbrella. So once you're about here, good stuff. You should now be able to climb on top of this, which is really cool. So there's a few more chests on either side. I'm going to jump on there first of all. And we're going to just have a quick look across there and see if there's anything cool we can get. Doesn't really look like there is. So we're going to climb on top of this. And we're going to go down and stand on the switch first of all, which will drop a chest. Cool. Then we're going to open this chest. Which is uh, five rupees. So there's one more chest in this room, obviously. Now, you can use the um, spikes uh, to get across, or you can use your long shot, whichever is preferable to you. And here we have the next small key, great stuff. So that's all we can do within this room. So we're now going to head back through the area that we've just come through, back through this door with the BMOSs, and we are once again going to make our way over here. Okay, so stop for a second and use the lens of truth and you'll be able to see the way across. Equip the hover boot, although you can make the jump if you so choose. And we are going to get across. For this next part, I would advise you probably just use the hover boots. Try and aim for the central area. Make your way across again. There we are. All about the spatial awareness. And we've made it through to the next room. So this next room. Well, another one of these. Watch. There we are. Invisible spikes. Wouldn't you know it. So there are some silver rupees in this room, if you hadn't noticed. And there is a chest up there as well. Well, first of all... We're going to be dealing with the re-deads just to get them out of the way and open one of the doors. So I'm just going to try and kill them real quick. And it actually froze me, but that doesn't matter. Uh, you really should be using the Sun Song before you attack these guys. The only reason I'm not is because 
Uh, basically, I think I can deal with them on my own, but never mind. So, we're gonna open this, and it's a five rupees, cool. So the re-deads are out of the way, giving us the freedom now to hunt for the rupees. So, there is a switch um, hookshot point up here, we're gonna get that. And that will give us a rupee. There is another hookshot point just there, so we're gonna try and get that. Great stuff. So, there is some more hookshot points, so I'm going to get them real quick as well. Nice. And there is another rupee over there. So, this one is a takes a little bit more skill to get. Basically, you have to line yourself up just right. There we are. And that opened that door. We're going to drop down, and this is where we're going to get a key in the next room. There's a jar with a um, with a bomb that we're going to have to put in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to climb up here and I'm going to take off these uh, hover boots because they are really getting in the way. I'm going to climb up here and there's a skull toller behind there. It's going to die in a minute, don't worry about it. Take out the bats first. Uh, just the, It's easier than when they start flying about. As you guys know, uh, you, obviously you will have bombs by now, but feel free to use these as well. Oh, and that bat actually affected me there, so... Again, we're going to pick up the bomb flower, and you need to throw it into the pot. There we are. Great stuff. I made that look much harder than it really is, and that revealed the small key. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the small key might disappear after a certain amount of time. So be sure to get that as quickly as you can. And here is the next gold skull tuller token. So now that we've done that, we're going to head out of this room because there's nothing else more to get. But first, we have to kill all of the remaining enemies in the room in order to open the door. So I'm just going to climb back up here. I'm going to attempt to kill the rest of the enemies. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, here we go. And hopefully we can shoot them. Maybe. Nice. Okay, cool. And that will open the door. So we're going to head through back to this room now. Right, so remember that there is invisible spikes in this room. Equip your Lens of Truth once again. Uh, lens of Truth. And we are going to hook shot, or long shot rather, up to that area there. And just uh, line it up. Great stuff. We're going to go through this door. into the next room. So this next room, uh, full of fans. Actually, the best way to do this is to equip the iron boot of all things. Uh, or, if you're feeling brave, you can just wait until the fans stop. It's entirely up to you. Get through to the next room. If you use the iron boot, it will not blow you back, which is pretty cool. Um, in fact, I may have to use the iron boots here to stop it blowing me into the next fan. In fact, for the purposes of this, I just advise you to use the iron boots, guys. It's just going to make things easier. And long shot across there. Drop down. Okay, that's going to be awkward. I'll just backflip over then. Cool. So this room, again, full of fans to the left and right this time. If you use the Lens of Truth... Just have a quick look around, make sure there's nothing you can't see. Okay, that's fine, I'm happy with that. So we're going to make our way across here. Ah, this thing. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head through this room here. And there is a re -dead. And I'm still wearing the iron boots by mistake, so I'm going to just quickly take them off. And... Okay, I wonder what this says.
Hmm. I genuinely didn't remember that. Okay. So yeah, that basically just told you what you need to do here. There is a chest that you can uh, open. And that will give you some more arrows. You will need arrows to fight the boss of this dungeon. And the first thing that you want to do now is equip the hover boots. Uh, avoid the fire. And all you have to do now is wait. Um, you can see there is a gap there. Well, what you need to do is equip the hover boots. And it will basically just blow you through to the next area. And we're going to open the door. Cool, so there's another room with some more Gib doors. Equip the Kikiri boots once again. And I think... I'm going to try and kill these guys. Nice. New strategy, do this. It's actually a lot easier. And a chest will appear. But there is, I think there's an invisible chest in this room as well, so we're just going to open that. Both of them. Or it's either under the rubble. Five rupees. It's either invisible or it's under some rubble. I think it might be under some rubble actually. So we're going to use a bomb. I think it was on this one. And it's invisible as well. Would you believe it? Bongo Bongo really hit his keys well. And that is another key there. Great stuff. So we're going to keep pushing forward now. Just through this next area. Open this door. And here we have the ship. Well, this part... First of all, what you really should do is pull this block out. You're going to need to do this. But it will also reveal a shortcut to you. So basically, you will be able to get back... Um, if you, you know, get lost or you start the dungeon again or whatever, you'll be able to get back here a lot quicker, which is really cool. But I'm going to be climbing up there in just a second. First, though. Okay, I'm going to get the Skull Tuller once we get onto the boat. Um, I actually can see the Skull Tuller and it's going to be easier to get it once the boat, uh, once we're on the boat. So we're going to climb up here, up these steps. Take a left, and we're going to jump onto here. Okay, so what to do now? Well, you'll notice that Navi will fly over there, so it's time for the good old Scarecrow song. There we are, great stuff. So, using your long shot, you must get across to the Scarecrow. Great stuff, and then you can just basically kill the Skull Tuller. And the next Skull Tuller token is ours. Okay, great stuff guys, great stuff. So, I mean, all we really have to do now is get the boss key and fight the boss. Simple enough, right? Well, I consider Bongo Bongo to be the hardest of the bosses. Even harder than Twin Rover, actually. Twin Rover is pretty straightforward. Stand on the switch and you want to play Zelda's Lullaby. That will start the ship moving. Which is pretty cool. Now, some Stalfos will appear here. You don't have to kill them. But it is something to do while you wait. But please be careful um, not to miss the exit of the boat. Because eventually the boat will stop and it will try and drop you to your death. So yeah, please just be careful with that. Um, like I say, you don't have to kill these guys. Mainly just a waiting game. And there we are, great stuff. So now that they've been defeated, we've got quite an easy passage through to the next area. But we're just waiting. And you should be able to see the next area on the left. 
So it will give you fair warning, but I'm just going to jump off now. Cool. So you will be able to see that there is some things there. There is a broken thing there, and we're going to have to make a bridge, basically. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to go through this door here, and we're going to get the boss key. So, this room is full of invisible walls that we have to uh, work our way around, as well as floor masters. So, we'll probably just explore the other three rooms in turn. Uh, we will start with the one on the right, and we'll just make our way around counterclockwise. So, this room here, you have to play Din's Fire, uh, sorry, you have to use Din's Fire. Or you can use the fire arrows. It is entirely up to you. But the point here is fire. Great stuff. Uh, we're going to finish him off. And we are going to finish him off as well. And that will give us the boss key. Which I'm sure you will all agree is extremely useful. Nice. So, now that we have the boss key, we are going to head through this door here. And we are basically just going to keep going from right to left until we have been in all of the rooms. So we're going to go through this next one here. And I'm looking for a Skulltulla in this room, and it's basically just behind here. You don't have to do anything with the pots. Uh, just drop some random stuff, but nothing really important, so don't... I mean, blow them up if you want to. But yeah, it's the next Skulltulla token. So, I do apologise, I'd forgotten to update the Skulltulla counter. So yeah, it's just jumped up by two there, we're now at 87 Skulltullas. Uh, we're next going to equip the Lens of Truth. Move on to the next room, which is just through here. Cool. So, using the lens of truth, we'll reveal an invisible floor master. You want to kill these guys before they attach themselves to you. If they do, it can be quite disastrous. And that will open a chest, which should have a small key inside. Great stuff, great stuff. Okay, so now that's opened, we're going to head back through this door. And again, we're going to travel right to left. And it should take us back to the original room that we started in. Just through here. Okay, great stuff. So, this next area, um, there is a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, so, you can see that there needs to get blown up. Well, what we're going to do is we are going to use good old-fashioned bomb chews. So, what we're going to do is look at the bombs, throw the bomb chew... And that did not work. Why didn't that work? Okay, so what you actually need to do here is uh, pull out your bow. There is two ways of doing this, actually. One, I will, in fact, I'll show you how to do both ways. Um, just so you guys know. But basically, the one way you can do is optional if you've got the Scarecrow song. And it's basically to stand here, and you want to play. And you can play the Scarecrow song, which will bring the Scarecrow about. Now, you can get over that way. Um, if you're looking for a more permanent way, um, what you can also do is shoot the bombs with an arrow. And that will destroy this pillar. allowing you access over to the next area. Now, if you didn't want to do that and you wanted to do the Scarecrow route, and who could blame you? Well, you can use your long shot. 
if I can just uh, reach him there. And that will get you across here, where you get some recovery hearts as well. So that's pretty cool. So, um, what you can do now, well, if you had done it that route, you could easily have just picked up these bombs afterwards, and obviously, uh, you could have created the bridge that way. But, now that we've actually got across, we are going to head through this door. And this is the room before the boss room, so, you enter and there's not really a lot here, but if you do this, you can see platforms. So, I am not, mm, yeah, I, anyway, yeah, I will. I was going to say I won't use the hover boots, but I will. Uh, just to show you guys uh, what to do. So, just hover across here. And turn to the right. And try and get a bit of a run and start. Just so, you know, you can, you can go that a little bit faster. And here we are at the boss room. So, enter the boss and you can actually it is actually possible um to not land down there but here we go bongo bongo arguably the hardest boss in the game so the first thing that you're going to want to do as soon as you start fighting him is take off them hover boots and there he is, Bongo Bongo. You really need to take your hover boots off. So what we're going to do here, we are going to swap to the Kakiri boots. And we have pretty much everything we need. We have uh, the arrows. And we have the um, Lens of Truth. That's pretty much all you need. Uh, so what we're going to do, is we are going to turn around and try to Z target one of the hands. Uh, okay, so he hit us there. So basically just going to button mash until he lets go. And we'll try and hit the other hand. Nice, okay. Equip the Lens of Truth. Z target and shoot him. Pull out your sword. And then you want to hit him. Good stuff. So again, Z target the hands. There's one hit. And again, the other one. Z target again. Oh dear. Okay, so I only just got him that time. That was quite lucky, actually. So I'm going to try and hit him quite a bit. And again, Z target the hands. And Z target the face. Pull out your sword. And again, repeatedly jump slash. Pick up some more arrows. Now this is going quite well actually, um, to be fair, but it's quite a hard fight. And that was it, Bongo Bongo defeated. Now that is actually quite difficult, I don't know if I made that look easy, but it's really not. And there he is, Bongo Bongo is no more. Great stuff, great stuff. Cool. So, first of all, heart container. Always good. And that increases our hearts as well. And then we're just gonna just gonna try and get that magic meter. Uh, yeah, I got it, cool. So, go on to the blue light and that will trigger the cutscene with the Sage of the Shadow Temple. And uh, if you guys hadn't guessed who it is, I won't give any spoilers. We're about to see. Now, I never understood why the spirit um, temple pedestal thing uh, and medallion spot was before uh, the shadow one. Because you kind of need, uh, as far as I'm aware, you need the lens of truth at least in order to get to the spirit temple. So, yeah. But Impa is a. Uh, she is one of the sages and she is the attendant to Zelda. So, if you guys thought that Sheik was Impa, unfortunately, you would be wrong.
and she's basically just gonna fill us in with uh, what she's been doing and what what she's been up to basically and she's letting us know that the princess is safe so somehow Princess Zelda has eluded Ganondorf for seven years We can't protect Princess Zelda because we don't know who she is. But we're going to get the Shadow Medallion. Which is great. Great stuff, great stuff. Cool. So I've decided what I'm going to do now. Is I'm going to head as part of this walkthrough. We're going to... Pretty much head straight for the Spirit Temple, Gerudo area. Um, but before we do that, there is um, there is a few more things that we need to get. But I'm just trying to decide what order we're gonna do this in. But we are gonna leave this here for today. Um, just want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Leave in the comments if you have any. And we'll continue this 100% next time. Take care, guys.